Imperial Fists are the stalwart shields of the Imperium, peerless tactical minds especially when it comes to siegecraft, exploiting any possible weakness to enemy positions and taking the advantage with perfect manoeuvres. Primarily based on Holy Terror, these are the guys you want when you have a problem to solve. Yellow is a notoriously difficult colour to paint, but I found a super simple method using an airbrush and some inks and I guarantee you this will help you fly through your next Imperial Fists army. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you at the end. I'm going to prime this initially in black and then I'm going to do a very heavy zenithal highlight using white ink. And this is going to be the beginnings of our highlights and shadows. As you can see, I haven't left much black at all, leaving only the deepest shadows. Now this product here is going to do most of the heavy lifting for this project. Now this brand is Liquitex, which I found to be the most accessible, being able to get it from most art shops around the area. And I also like this colour, it's not too bright, it's got a tiny bit of red in there. And if anybody has any recommendations for other brands of inks, please place them in the comments and I'm going to check them out. As you can see, the coverage for this ink is really good. This is just one coat and I think that's all it's going to need. And we just need a tiny bit of contrasting on this, so I'm using some Scale 75 Ink Tense Red. And I'm just putting a tiny drop of this in the cap with some of the yellow ink. And this is just going to give us a nice orange colour. And what we're going to do is spray this from the bottom of the model. And this is going to give us a nice subtle contrast. And I'm thinking this is going to be my next army for Horus Heresy, so I'll be able to put this method to the test. Before I do any of the details on this model, I'm going to put the transfers on. And to do this, I'm using Microset. And this product basically lets you conform your transfers to uneven surfaces. It has a consistency of water and it smells like vinegar and it basically brushes onto the areas that you want to place your transfers. And once your transfers are on there, it's good to put a coat of this on afterwards because it's going to help it dry a lot harder. In turn, it's going to give you a longer lifespan on these transfers. Now, after a lifetime of painting Airfix models, I still haven't got the hang of putting on transfers. I've only found that involves a lot of patience and perseverance. And one good tip is to pat them down with a bit of damp paper towel when you're finished with them. This will help get out any air bubbles or creases. And one of the reasons I like to put the transfers on early is because if we decide to do any weathering, we can weather the badges as well. Whereas if you decide to put them on afterwards, you're going to have these really shiny new logos on the shoulders on top of this worn out armor, which is going to look weird. Now for the trim on these Imperial Fists, it's usually black, but I find that gunmetal looks much better. And this is a really dark metallic silver, so it's going to almost pass as black anyway, but it's just going to look a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to be very careful when I'm doing this trim because this yellow is going to be really hard to fix if we accidentally get this silver on it. I also decided to paint the entirety of the power pack this colour and also the fingers on the power fist. Once this metallic's all dry, I'm going to give it a good wash in Nuln Oil and I'm going to also create a little barrier between the yellow and the silver. You can do this easily by just slightly overhanging your brush when you go over these metallic areas. Now apart from the base, this model was essentially done, so I wanted to paint a few little freehand details onto the armour. And to do this, I'm referencing one of these old Forge World artworks. And I'm just going to roughly trace the eagle head and draw a couple of lightning bolts coming out the bottom. And on the Power Fist, I'm going to draw a really simple Templar cross. And there's a really easy way to do this, and you start off with a plus symbol. Paint a small triangle on the end of each point and then paint the end of each triangle towards the centre of the plus. For the eyes on this model I'm going to do the simple 1-2 technique of a small dot of white followed by some Blood Angels red contrast paint. And because these guys are primarily based on Terra, I'm going to make an Earth-like surface. And this is the Earth in the year 40,000, so it's a little bit more arid than it is now. So I'm using this Agrolan Earth, which is a crackle medium paint. And when this dries, it looks really dry and crackly. 
and once it has dried, just give it a wash with some Agrax Earthshade. And to give this base a bit of character, I'm going to use a bit of shrubbery and a little bit of rubble pigment. And this pigment is from MIG and I'm just going to apply it with a dry brush all around the base and then onto the legs of the model. I find this putting on the legs just really ties it in with the base. And that's pretty much it for this model. And I think in total I probably spent about an hour working on this model, not including drying time. And I'm really happy with the results of this yellow. I've been put off painting a large Imperial Fist Army for a very long time just because of this daunting task, but as you can see it's not as high as it looks. And if you'd like to keep seeing content from us, please like and subscribe as it'll help keep the channel going. And we also have a Patreon and a Discord page below if you'd like to come and join us for some chats and hang out and hobbies. Oh, <laughs>